So years ago, I used to run up this hill off my left that you're about to see, and we're gonna see if the Antioquia 8 Pro Max can ride up it uh, with no pedal assist, so just throttling up. Uh, I'm not 100% sure the, the, the grade or steepness, but I'm gonna try and figure it out. Uh, but it, needless to say, it is punishing. Well, there it is. Full power and accelerating. This isn't the steepest part. Getting almost 15 miles an hour there. Let's switch to the amps. All right, here we go. Little little acceleration before here. Damn. All right, eight miles an hour. Keep in mind this battery is not full, but definitely saw some D cell there. But we're still holding almost 10 miles an hour with no pedaling. That's full throttle again. So here's another hill that I'm gonna throttle only up. Let's see how fast we go. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a pretty conventional steepness and we're doing 20 miles an hour. That other hill was advanced, so probably one of the steepest grades that you could find in this area. I have pedal assist number one set for a little bit tamed down from when it came out of the factory. It used to go like 13, 14 miles an hour, but I have it set so that I go just under 10. I also create, I just modified like everything. pedal assist one and I got a little jerk of the motor I don't think I did that with my hands so occasionally the controller could just be a little just act a little bit skittish and weird now depending on the speed the uh, pedal assist can occasionally take a little bit of pedaling like half a revolution maybe and then you get the motor sometimes it's just like the mo most minute uh, movement of the pedal just will the motor just starts kicking real fast so it takes getting used to but it's nothing that you can't deal with Let's go pedal assist four here and i kind of lose a little bit of a ghost here so i'm just pedaling uh, as a ghost there's no uh, influence by my pedaling right now get about 23 miles an hour only pulling about 12 amps i know it might be hard to see with the glare but uh, yeah, just hovering a little over 10 amps of uh, discharge. Pedal assist five. I might not get to top speed here. I'm gonna help it. So now it's top speed, and I'm in the upper teens on the on the discharge. So I was about 18. There's that resonance that I sometimes get on my brakes. I haven't quite. I feel like the reason for that might be the pads are are a little bit on the outer rim of the rotor. So I feel like what could be happening is the perimeter of the rotor is starting to chafe with the pads a little bit, and it could be causing a little bit of the sound that I'm experiencing. I'm not 100% sure if that's it. Resonance. Well, one of the main reasons I brought my pedal assist one down so low is uh, so I could enjoy riding through places like this where it's really crowded, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, and you don't want to be the douchebag who's just uh, freaking everybody out and giving bad rap to e-bikers. Uh, however, it is kind of funny how the Antioche handles pedal assist one at such a low speed because you kind of just hear the battery or the motor like jiggling on and off a lot it's not just like a steady the bike's pretty easy to ride uh, with 
without the motor at speeds like this. Like, if I just kind of pick up my cadence. I feel like I could hold this for a long time. The seating, the, the position's kind of bad. Uh, like, you can't sit up as high as you'd like. Other issue is, apparently someone, I had a comment about how the seat slides down, and I had the, that issue too, where I went on a ride, and then by the end of it, my seat was like almost bottomed out. It says I'm going eight, that says I'm going eight, so I did GPS evaluate against my watch. I actually could probably show you guys that too, where it's display, and the watch is calling, uh, oops, dimmed. The watch is calling also about eight, so I'm finding that this is not an overestimation. Uh, definitely not. It tends to even almost underestimate. Now, I did go into the settings and uh, I dialed down the uh, wheel diameter by like one notch. I think it was defaulted at maybe 23 or 24 and it's now at 21 or 2. Uh, I find that the speedometer is a little more accurate that way. Okay, there's full power and then the old Toyota wins. <laughs> well, we just got three bars, so we're finally getting lower and lower. And in theory, with this bike doing uh, 100 miles at full throttle on a, you know, on a optimistic opinion or perspective, uh, and here I am at 60 miles, in theory I should be uh, about you know, 40% remaining on the batteries. So to see it at half now, it makes, it seems to be sensible to me. We got a, someone passing. It's the red, I'm not sure which one that is, but it's a red power bike. And if I wanna just keep up with it, I can. And I don't have to worry about my battery. If I wanna pass it. I can do that too. The thing I love so much about this bike is I can enjoy multiple rides to so many places that I like to go to, whether it's work or just for pure pleasure, pure leisure. And I don't ever have to worry about this battery dying out on me. Uh, Cause here I am after I've gone to and from rough in this area I'm, I am in right now which is about a 10 mile ride from my home and then you have to go back so there's an extra 10 miles so I've done that twice there's 40 of the miles I've gone and then I've gone to and from work I've just kind of roamed around for no, aimlessly and yeah to be able to just get all of this enjoyment and not have to worry about the battery dying. Heck, I don't even, a ride like this on all my other, all the other e-bikes I've ever had, you're kind of, you have to pedal, uh, like it's not an option, uh, unless you're gonna you know, go ahead and charge it right away or keep, keep track of it. That range anxiety is always kind of there. But this one, it's just like, oh, if I wanna just throttle it up a little bit, I'm not really that worried about it. I'm not, having to think, oh, you know, if I do that too many times, I'm, I'm gonna drain the battery and I won't get home, or uh, it's just gonna be kind of a nuisance to have my a dying battery. So, yeah, I, I gotta admit, like this was, the bike's not perfect, right? But gosh, does it make up for a lot of its imperfections uh, with the incredible battery range and the, the battery size. Yeah, I can't tell you enough how how much of a joy it is to just rip around, throttle only, uh, or you know paddling, whatever floats your boat, and then just never worry about the battery. It's uh, so it's such a nice feeling. Now I'm noticing that as the bars drop down, the uh, top speed that I get with every pedal assist, and this one being number four, is about a mile an hour discount. Two miles an hour is the speed that uh, I'm getting right now with three bars of battery. Uh, though when it's a topped off battery, I get closer to 24. 
And since there's no one here, I'm gonna give it a quick little pedal assist vibe. See what we get out of that at this uh, kind of half battery. I'm pulling about 24 amps, down down to 19 amps, 18 amps, 16 amps. So kind of in the mid to upper teens, and I'm only doing 28 miles an hour. Doing that big power stretch just there, or that uh, kind of speed speed test, uh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the battery. I know I'm gonna get home. Uh, it would, I feel like it's impossible to get this battery to die. You'd have to really be screwing around all day long. And heck, if you were to bring your charger with you, yeah, it does take you know eight to ten hours to charge, but it puts out eight amps, so that's like 400 watts of power every hour. Uh, where you know other e-bikes, you would need to charge for like three or more hours to uh, to get that same amount of energy uh, into the battery. So if you have more battery than you know what to do with. Your ability to replenish the charge is uh, above anything else that I'm familiar with. So I finally hit one bar of battery left and I'm at 96.2 miles. If you like to ride with uh, kind of a lower speed and you're helping the bike a lot while you pedal, uh, I could easily see a rider getting uh, 150 miles, maybe even a little bit more uh, with this bike. So it really does depend on uh, your riding habits. Uh, it is a very, the question, it's eager. Everyone wants to know, you know, what's the range? What's the range? What's the range? And obviously the answer is it depends on so many different things. You know, on average, I can't, I can't speak of averages yet because this is my first time uh, with the bike, first time uh, on a charge. Uh, with my other bike, the 20 amp hour, I can do, you know, typically 40 miles is when I'll be at about half, a little less than half the battery. And I'd like to see, uh, I'll definitely uh, update about what the behavior of this battery is like over time. For now, definitely can prove that 100 miles is doable. I'm not, the battery's not even dead, like I can still go. I'm not even sure how much, it might, heck, there might even be another level where it starts flashing. And so, in which case, this isn't really the last bar. I don't know what the, what the specs are on it, but 100 miles, that's, that's for sure. You can do 100 miles with this, with this bike. And on the last bar of battery, let's see if we can get to top speed. Oh yeah, no problem. 27, 28, easily. So this is pretty crazy. I charged the battery finally because it did say it was at one bar up here. And just before I put it on the charger, I clicked on this uh, little battery status light and it shows three green and then one red bar. And all I had had was one, that far left green light wasn't there. So I had the two right next to my index finger and the red. So there was three illuminated bars that suggests the battery was somewhere around 50%, which definitely conflicts with what I was seeing on the display, which said only one bar. The battery, or the bike certainly felt like it was starting to be weaker and weaker and like the battery was getting lower, but who's to say, because uh, I have no reference, I've never actually depleted the battery entirely. Uh, it's not good to deplete batteries entirely, and that's kind of what I was going for when I charged it, but after charging it, it's clear that the battery was not uh, completely dead or nearly dead. It took only five hours and 49 minutes to charge. And they advertise it takes eight to 10 hours from uh, a dead battery. So needless to say, the battery had plenty left in it. I estimate that it had close to one kilowatt hour of battery left. And with one kilowatt hour of battery remaining, I in theory could have rode probably another 35, 40 miles, especially at my more tamed down habit. I don't 
typically go full speed. I'm so, so impressed. I, I clocked in basically 100 miles there, but I for sure had some room left in the tank. And it's nice to know that this thing ought to not just die out on you uh, randomly, uh, even if it is showing one bar. There's definitely still something left in that battery. So you got a solid 100 plus miles, uh, at least in a kind of mixed uh, type of riding style where you're throttle sometimes, full speed sometimes, but also pedaling sometimes. Uh, if you're definitely ripping it full throttle all the time, I, I would think somewhere around 100 miles. Uh, and that's pretty legitimate. 